Hi, beautiful people of the living God. May God bless you and keep you. So the Most High wants me to teach you about touch not his anointed and do his prophets no harm and to show you that when he tells his creation don't touch something, how he punishes them. And if he told you not to touch his anointed, you should not touch them. Just like when he told Adam and Eve don't touch the tree, in Genesis and how he punished them, he wants me to go through Genesis and go through the scriptures. Not many. One, two, three, four. And about David not even touching Saul because he's God's anointed. So we're going to see how God doesn't play about his anointed children. And I'm anointed. All right. I'm anointed and appointed. You, If you've watched my videos from before, from this beginning journey with me and God, you know that he anointed me a teacher. He anointed me with wisdom. He anointed me with knowledge, understanding, and the list goes on. I'm not going to tell you everything. If you know, then you know. And there's more that I don't really have to disclose to you. Um, but anyways, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just very humble in all the things that God has blessed me with, and I'm thankful. And he's given me the words of wisdom to speak to you concerning this thing about touch not his anointed and to show you even a video that the devils and the evil angels know touch not God's anointed so he has so they make people do it they make men and women and teenagers and children touch God's anointed but that they won't even do it because they know that there's big punishments from God if God did this to Adam and Eve for touching a tree what do you think he'll do to you for touching his anointed so let's get into it I don't want to hold you all right beautiful people of God so in Genesis 3 and 5, right? I mean, Genesis 3 and 3, it says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. So what, do you, what will happen? What are you open to if you touch something that God tells you not to touch? You'll die. This was a tree. This was a tree. Imagine his anointed. That's what he wants me to tell you. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. So Satan tells you to touch God's anointed and tells you you won't die because God doesn't kill you right away when you do it. So you think that you're not going to die. So Satan sends his minions to trouble God's anointed. Just like he sent, said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God does not know the day that you eat thereof. He's saying God doesn't know. Doesn't God is all seeing and all knowing. Then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He lies to her. He lied to the woman. So, yes, he lies to you. He lies to the people who touch God's anointed. All right? So we got to go down here. They were punished. What happened when, when they sinned? God punished them. God, and the Lord said unto the woman, What is this thing? What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So she was tricked by the serpent to do evil and go against the word of God and disobey in him. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, the serpent lied and tricked her, thou art cursed above all cattle. So Satan is cursed above all cattle. This is not the fallen angels God did this to. This was not the evil personalities and the principalities and powers and the higher powers. He did this to Satan. Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou sh shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise its heel. That it was a curse. Now, this is God punishing Eve. He didn't curse her. Unto the woman, he said, this is what he said to say, thou art cursed. God didn't curse Eve. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Husband's the head over her because she listened to the serpent and he shall rule over thee. And Adam, God didn't curse Adam. God punished Adam, gave him a judgment, 
And unto Adam he said, Because thou art has hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground. So got two curses happened that day. He cursed the serpent in Genesis 3 and 14, and now you hear God cursing the ground in Genesis 3 and 17. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Because the ground is not supposed, the ground, God blessed everything he made in the beginning and he said it was good. He, he made his work and he said it was good. Everything he made and he blessed it. So the brown was blessed. So the ground was always producing fruitfulness because it's blessed. And God had to curse the ground because of Adam. So he stopped the fruitfulness of the ground producing how it produced. Now they have to till to the land for it to produce. And did the ground deserve that? The ground was blessed. Now God had to curse it to stop it from producing all the fruitfulness because of Adam and Eve's sin. But he didn't curse Adam and Eve. He cursed the ground and he cursed Satan that day. And then he goes on to say, thorns, this is him still talking to Adam. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Because he made, because the ground had to get cursed because of him. So thorns and thistles, the ground is bringing out to Adam. Because he made it get cursed without cause. It was blessed. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. What does he say over here? He has to, um... Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. He has to work for it. When he was in the garden, he didn't have to work for his food. Now, because the ground got cursed because of him, he has to. Right? And till thou return unto the ground. His death was required because the curse, the ground that was blessed, had to be cursed because of him. All right. For out of it was thou taken. He was taken out of the ground and God had to curse the ground, which in which hence he was made out of. For dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife. So do you get that now? Why God? God loves everything he made. All his creation were made for him and for his delight. Even the ground, even Adam and Eve were judged for that. Sorry, that just clicked by accident. All right. Now I'm going to continue here. What did God do to Adam and Eve for, for touching the tree and eating of it? So you got to know what he's going to do to, his, to people touching his anointed. We're getting there. But he wants me to go over Genesis. So I'm going to go over Genesis and read Chronicles, Psalms, just quick, quick scriptures. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, holy cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep way of the tree of life. He drove the man and the woman out of the garden. And he gave them punishments for them touching that tree. So he wants you to know what do you think he's going to do to you for touching his anointed. Even death was required of their lives. When he tells you not to touch something, you're open for death. Because Genesis 3 and 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So you're open to death when you touch God's anointed. 1 Chronicles 16 and 22 saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And it's written again in Psalms 105 and 15, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Now, David... King David was wise enough not to touch God's anointed because he didn't touch King Saul when he kept making attempts over his life when the evil spirit kept going on Saul and he was trying to slay David with the javelin. He said in 1 Samuel 26 and 10, David said, furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall smite him or his day shall come to die or he shall descend into battle and perish. Right? The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou not the spear that is in that is at his bolster and the crews of water and let us go. So God wants you to know the 144,000 are his anointed 
and your elites and your higher powers and all the people who are high up, they've been touching his anointed. And even King David was wise enough not to touch King Saul. He would not even, he says, the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. He would not do it. He would not, he would not lest he perish. And it's again in 1 Samuel 26 and 9. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So anybody who stretched forth their hand against anybody who God has anointed, you're not going to be guiltless. King David wouldn't even put his hands on Saul. And Saul made so many attempts against King David's life. And King David was anointed. But he was anointed after King Saul. And yet still, when King Saul was doing those things and evil spirits were coming on King Saul to slay him, he would not lift up his hand against the Lord's anointed because he knew he will not be guiltless. And God wants you to know those who come against anyone he's anointed, you will not be guiltless and you'll be open to this. Death, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And that was a tree. He said, don't touch it lest you die. That was a tree. So imagine to his people, have a blessed day.